When investors think of financial markets, the first thing that likely comes to mind is the stock market. But there's actually a bigger, less flashy counterpart to the equity market, the bond market. Probably the biggest market out there when it comes to capital markets. You hear a lot about the equity side, but in, in reality, the bond market is much, much bigger. At the heart of it lies one of the safest assets in the world, U.S. Treasury bonds. As interest rates have risen over the past few years, treasuries have offered some of the highest yields in decades. The U.S. Treasury market is a large market in the U.S. fixed income world. It's giving you higher yield than it has in the last 20 years. The yield levels and the income opportunity is, is much, much more interesting and attractive today than 12, 18, 24 months ago. We've been used to having incredibly low yields here in the U.S. and globally. Buyers of U.S. Treasuries have been changing, and the shift could have broad implications for the U.S. economy. What we've seen over the last couple of years is we've seen a declining appetite for U.S. government debt, which is really unusual. The U.S. sort of stood out across all the other countries as being so dependent on foreign investors. They're in China's pullback as a buyer, Japan has pulled back as a buyer. China and Japan have not over many, many years been huge buyers. I feel like we have not paid attention to the treasury market because it was a market for foreigners or for the Fed. Now it's a market for all of us and it's giving you better yield. So it's something which we should not ignore. So why are major buyers fleeing the treasury market? What's the impact on yields and the economy at large? And just how can investors best navigate the market going forward? So we have a really healthy overall bond market in the U.S. It comprises of U.S. government bonds, corporate bonds, mortgage bonds. Uh, treasuries is a key one, which is basically the, the federal government issuing debt for their funding needs. Almost half the bond market is the U.S. Treasury market. According to the Bloomberg Aggregate Bond Index, which tracks the performance of U.S. investment-grade bonds and is widely considered to represent the bond market as a whole, U.S. Treasuries account for over 42% of the index. So I almost view the Treasury market as the benchmark bond market, which is used for every other corporate bond. And sets the tone as sort of the risk-free rate for all the other investments in the bond market. And those bonds are considered to be very, very safe investments because they're guaranteed by the U.S. government. If you're gonna invest a dollar into Treasury bonds, you're gonna get that, that dollar back. While the Federal Reserve doesn't directly control Treasury yield levels, their actions on short-term borrowing rates, or the Fed funds rate, can indirectly feed its way through the market. That's another thing that we've seen consistently over the past year and a half or so, that as the Fed has raised its benchmark borrowing rates, say by a quarter point or half a point, the Treasury market has generally followed in kind. If the Fed's going higher, bond holders generally say, okay, we want more yield as well. And U.S. Treasury buyers can generally be classified into one of two subcategories, domestic and foreign. On the one hand, you have your domestic buyers, uh, of which the Federal Reserve is, is one of the largest buyers of treasuries. Just a year ago, the Fed was a big buyer. But the Fed steps in when they are doing QE, quantitative easing, is where they step in as a buyer. You have pensions, insurance companies, uh, money market funds, real money investors, as, as well as banks that buy treasuries. And on the foreign side, we see pretty good demand from a variety of countries for, for treasuries. Both Japan as well as China are very large holders of treasury bonds. Foreign investors are a big buyer base. It's a much smaller buyer base today than it was 10, 15 years ago, but it's still a solid source of demand. Historically, perception has always been that given the fact that treasuries are very desired by both domestic as well as foreign investors, that there's always demand for treasuries. But that thesis was put to test late last year when we saw the surge in treasury supply because of, of an increase in both bill as well as coupon issuance. In the last few years, so I'm talking about the last couple of years, really since COVID, we've seen foreign demand for treasuries 
declining significantly. There's been a pretty major shift in the buyer base uh, of treasuries away from some of the more traditional players like the foreign governments in general and even the Federal Reserve themselves. Demand from global central banks, particularly Japan and China, are huge buyers of U.S. debt. They have pulled back, particularly China has pulled back quite a bit. Their holdings are now less than one trillion dollars, which is the first time that's happened in a number of years. Both Japan and China, while still ranked as the top two foreign holders of U.S. Treasuries, have seen their respective holdings decline in recent years. Right around the same time, the Federal Reserve began raising interest rates in March of 2022. For example, Japan has historically been a very, very large buyer of the U.S. Treasuries. They had a significant yield pickup by buying U.S. Treasuries for a very long time compared to what they could find at home. That has been eroding of late. Because if I am a life insurance company in Japan, my liabilities are in yen. And so if even if I earn a lot of dollars on my treasury position, I need to hedge it back to yen because my payment is made in yen. The cost of buying treasuries on a currency adjusted basis has gone up quite meaningfully over the last six months. Two other big buyers that emerged in the last few years was the Fed that was doing QE to try and be stimulative to the economy. Well, QE is over. We're actually undergoing quantitative tightening. So the Fed is not buying. They're actually letting their portfolio shrink. They're still very large holders of US treasuries, but they're not as actively buying. And the other one was banks, domestic banks, very big buyers of treasuries since COVID because deposits grew significantly and loan demand wasn't high. Well, deposits have been shrinking. The treasury has had to rely on other market participants to step in and take down that additional supply. And so now the new marginal buyer is really U.S. domestic investors. And who's that? That's mutual funds, households, pension, insurance. And they've been kind of picking up the slack to a certain extent as these you know, foreign kind of de demand and buyers have been stepping away. So when I think of the natural buyers of treasuries, those that would buy treasuries, you know, not necessarily because they expected it to work in a portfolio sense, those buyers are gone. As we're seeing a shift towards some of these more domestic investors, be it again hedge fund, mutual funds, individual investors, uh, what we're observing is that they're a lot more price sensitive. They're just not quite as, as sticky. So we would expect to see a little bit more volatility here going forward. That's why you look at the treasury market now, we're moving. Even when the Fed's not doing anything, the Fed hasn't hiked rates or cut rates um, in the last six months. And yet the tenure moves 78 basis points on a daily basis. And then also this other concept of what we call a term premium, which means the extra yield that investors want for holding longer term securities. Investors want to be compensated uh, for uh, taking down that additional supply. That's played a significant role in the rise so far in treasury yields. So now we've seen the 10 year yield uh, actually eclipse 5% at one point. Elevated treasury yields, in particular the 10 year yield, can have a ripple effect on the broader economy. The 10 year is considered a direct feed through to certain parts of the market, particularly mortgage rates. As the 10 year yield rises, mortgage rate generally rises in tandem. It sets the floor for interest rates. And then every other, the mortgage rate is going to be higher than that, and the corporate rate is going to be higher. For instance, when the 10 year yield was close to 5%, mortgage rates were north of 8%. So that's why we sort of call it the benchmark 10-year note, that it is something that markets and also lenders, banks, that kind of thing, position a lot of their other rates off. You can see a scenario where the Fed's cut rates to 3% and the 10-year is still at 4% because we just don't have enough buyers off the 10-year within the U.S. domestic space. Similarly, high treasury yields can also have an impact on the stock market. If, for example, the risk-free rate was say the 10-year yield from a, from a treasury perspective is very, very high and, and you as an investor just feels like all I need is a 5% return on my savings, well, guess what? That's where you're probably going to just put it into treasury yields. Because again, if your risk-free rate is this, then the moment I start to take on risk, I should get paid more. You want to make sure that you get some return on top of that risk-free rate.
I would say in general, I am positive on bonds. Fed is done. It's a good hedge against risk assets. And there's likely to be money moving out of money market funds and bank deposits into bonds. Our view is that we should expect a little bit more of a stable environment coming into 2024. The Federal Reserve, we think, is done from their you know, hiking cycle. We don't expect them to hike rates anymore. So we expect uh, Treasury yields to decline gradually during the course of this year, as the expectation in the market is for the Fed to cut rates. And when the Fed starts to cut rates, normally that's the start of a bull market. If the Fed uh, continues where some of the ending their QT, as we call it, or the FX hedging costs starts falling, and some of these foreign buyers and the Federal Reserve perhaps start stepping back in at some point, then that could you know, absorb some of those price sensitive buyers volatility. Yields look uh, quite attractive. 10 year yields is still uh, slightly north of 4%. We like to stress to investors that the yield and therefore the income is the vast majority of the returns for fixed income. So at these high levels, you have a much better opportunity. As for investors who may have missed out on the 5% Treasury yield back in October of 2023. Owning the 10-year at 5% now in hindsight looks like a great trade. But had the Fed raised rates again in December? that trade would have underperformed. I would say that if you go back in history, these yields are still very, very attractive compared to what we've seen for the past 15, 20 years, so to say. I think a lot of things have to go a certain way for that tenure to be a bad investment at 4%. You missed a little bit of that, but I think there's still a lot of room and carry if you were to buy the tenure here. There is a lot of good opportunities out there, and particularly if you take a medium to longer term perspective, uh, this is an, an attractive entry point all in all.